ADHD or attention hyperactive activity. That's not right. <laughs> I have this condition. Oh my god. Hello world and all who inhabit it. ADHD or attention Deficit hyperactivity disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder which can cause behavioral problems relating to impulsivity and mood and emotion control, as well as problems with procrastination, sleep, executive function, sensory processing, general restlessness. It kind of affects everything about you. It's sort of like if your brain were a camera that just couldn't decide if it was going to focus on the foreground or the background, and so it's trying to focus on both at once. And you can't really control which one it's going to focus on, or how many things it's going to focus on. In spite of these difficulties though, ADHD can also come with a lot of strengths. Many successful figures have had it throughout history, including we theorize Agatha Christie, maybe Mozart, and even modern pop star Justin Timberlake. I even have it, if you didn't know that already. Yeah, you do. So I was surprised when I saw a headline a couple months ago that said Leonardo da Vinci, one of the most prominent figures in art history, or perhaps even in history, may have had it too. But did he? And if he did, what are the signs? And can we know for sure? While it is hard to say for sure if Leonardo da Vinci had ADHD, because we can't exactly go back in time and, you know, test him, there are definitely some signs we would look at someone today and say, yeah. For example, we know that he was left-handed and dyslexic, which are both common traits that are typically in people with ADHD. A lot of people with ADHD have a comorbidity of dyslexia and or dyscalculia. We know that he procrastinated all the time and we know that he had a terrible sleep cycle. He did not have a steady sleep cycle. He basically just went to bed when he wanted to go to bed and woke up and worked when he wanted to get up and work. It took him four years to complete the Mona Lisa and I personally don't think that that's just because it's such an iconic realistic painting but I also think that probably had something to do with the jumping back and forth because he would be like oh I'm bored I'm gonna do this and I could come back and he'd go back and forth and also because it obviously took a lot of time but because he's it's kind of the definition of an interspace nervous system. He was decidedly unconventional and he didn't really care much for becoming conventional either. One thing he was reported to do a lot was to buy birds as pets and then he set them free rather than keep them. He was a vegetarian. Another thing he did was he took cadavers of people and performed dissections, which was incredibly taboo at the time, but to him that was the best way to study anatomy and it's still something we we do now it's just considered okay now we have a lot of evidence of this behavior not just from the fact that we have like hundreds of his notes and his drawings and these sketches of flying machines and other things that he was famous for but also because his clients that commissioned him reported on more than one occasion that he was kind of hard to get you know your work from which Ah, that's familiar. He'd just be like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and as a result, he was kind of considered to be kind of flighty, actually. A trait that is commonly associated with people with ADHD today. In the words of neurophysiologist Marco Cantini and medical historian Palio Mazzarello, I know I said that wrong, the story of da Vinci is one of paradox, a great mind, that has compassed the wonders of anatomy, natural philosophy and art, but also failed to complete so many projects. The two of them also authored a paper on this in t that came out in 2019, in which they argued that there is a very strong case for post-mortem diagnosing da Vinci with ADHD. It seems to us today that da Vinci got more done than we could complete in a lifetime. He did paint The Last Supper, he did the Mona Lisa, he did that thing, that guy, and he's like, you know, the perfect proportions, what's, what's that called? Vitruvian man. Often, especially when you have a condition like ADHD or autism, you're made to feel like a failure, especially if you have to, you know, go in and work a nine to five office job because that's, that's not how a lot of our brains work. Here's a weird thing about Leonardo da Vinci that I actually didn't know until recently. In Leonardo's lifetime, he actually considered himself a failure. He was remarkably intelligent, creative, 
incredibly talented, and created some of the most famous works of art in history that we know today. So what the heck happened? How could someone like that consider themselves to be a failure? This sort of I can't possibly do enough thinking is actually pretty common in people with ADHD. It's one of the things we struggle with most and talk about the least. We often see the world as being close to what we want. We see our abilities as being almost what we want. And our own goals, we know how to achieve them. We just can't and we can't really explain why because it's pretty hard to put into words executive dysfunction, which can cause a lot of procrastination or a lot of task switching that you may or may not want to do. Leonardo da Vinci lived in a time long before we had any idea of what we would today call psychiatry. There was no definition of ADHD, and it's actually only recently that ADHD has begun to be recognized as, as a condition that can and does affect adults. It's also important to remember that Leonardo da Vinci would have had no way of knowing that his work would have been remembered so long after his death. There is an abundance of art being produced all the time, all hours of the day. Think of all the stuff that's uploaded on YouTube. Of course, that's not all art, but still. But that quantity of things is about the amount of art that's being produced at all hours of every day. So it's kind of reasonable to think, I probably won't be remembered in 100 years, even if you, you know, made an impact at the time. There's no way he could have possibly known that. For everyone, though, in the world to be able to look at the Mona Lisa and know for sure. I know who did that, and I know around in history when that was done, pretty big deal. But as a result of him not being able to switch when he wanted, you know, he's being told all the time, hey, why didn't you get my thing done? He's constantly on this in this world where he's fighting between what he's supposed to do, even as a creator, and what his brain wants to do, which is everything but what you're supposed to do. It is, um, honestly, a lot of people, I've heard it called an intraspace nervous system, which I think is a much better name for ADHD. ADHD is not a well-named condition. We don't have a deficit of attention at all. So what, you know, do we know for sure if Leonardo da Vinci had ADHD. And what can we take away from this as creators with ADHD, people with ADHD, or just any neurodivergent folks? The truth is we can't really know definitively if he had ADHD, because again, we can't go back and test him, but I definitely think he did. All of the signs are there, not just from him, but from what pe other people wrote about him and what they wrote about their experiences with working with him. So I, I do think that the evidence is there. I think the best thing that we can take away from this today, especially for my fellow ADHD artists out there who might be watching this, hello, is we probably won't know the impact that we're making while we're alive. I mean, not in the long term, anyway. And we might feel like failures, but our feelings are not necessarily an accurate reflection of how the world sees us and or we really are. That's an important like that cognitive distortion thing is a really important thing to keep track of, especially when you're learning how to manage your ADHD. People may not always remember to tell you if you've made an impact on them. We've got a million things to worry about in the world. I mean, you never know. Like, and it isn't people being mean or cruel. It's, it's just that we've all got our own lives and I'm sure you're making a bigger difference than you know. And I'm sure that generations down the line, something you did that made a positive impact will be still passed along to another person, and I'll keep going. Thank you to my patrons. I'm gonna put the credits right here. I think I'm still in the frame. If you want to support this and my other content, I also write. I'm trying to work on comics. I'd like to start a second YouTube channel about horror, but I don't know for sure if that's gonna happen. But anyway, um, if you want to help me do this full time, the link to Patreon will be in the description below. Everything, everything helps so much. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching, and don't doubt yourself. Bye.